Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an organizer and may now speak with other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready for your attendees to hear you, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody, and welcome to 5 and 15, a webinar series from Charleston Erwig, where we promise to give you five interesting, useful, helpful, maybe even mind-bending tips, ideas that you can use in your work, all in the constraints of a 15-minute webinar, because we know you are busy. My name is Mark Gale. I'm CEO here at Charleston Erwig, a 100% employee-owned company, strategic marketing and communications focused across the food system, agriculture to food on the plate. That's the last commercial you'll hear. Please use the chat pane to send us any questions. We'll get to those. We're going to spend 10, 12 minutes on the subject matter, leave a few minutes for your questions. We probably won't get to all the Q&A, so I promise I will send you this deck as well as the Q&A, but I will not bug you. And if you want to take something offline, you can always email me at that address there, mark.g at charlesonorwig.com. Let's jump right into technologies that are going to change industries, food, consumers, us in agriculture and food. The first one, how about counterintuitive? High tech meet high touch. Don't forget about paper because you see that book, and I'm gonna send a copy of that book to the first three people who send in questions today. That book, top selling book of 2018. Cookbooks, a 21% rise in sales in 2018. 84% rise in sales that have something related to Instant Pot. A four billion with a B dollar market cookbooks are on fire. Well, you know what else is on fire? The technology related to that. Because whereas millennials and others are buying cookbooks, guess what they do not use them to do? Cook. When it comes to cooking, they go back to their phone or their tablet. 60%, as you can see, what's the biggest meal planning challenge people say they have? Despite the facts that, that as long as I can remember, recipes have been huge on the internet, people don't know what to cook. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? As if there aren't enough recipes for bruschetta out there. Instagram, we know, is where a lot of this is happening. Food porn, 190 million posts and growing. What does this mean to you? Why should you care? Well, 80% of meals are eaten at home when not working, not cooked at home necessarily, sometimes increasingly brought into the home. 63% of consumers say food labels are very important to them. We know that from some research recently that Charles and Orwig did. I can send you a copy if you want. Why should you really care? Because high value audiences that you are trying to content, that you are trying to target want food related content you have content this marriage of old school and new school provides tremendous opportunity for you as a marketer number two technology related to raise your hand if you know what orthorexia is well guess what i can't see your hands i'm not spying on you I know you probably don't know what it is. It's tied to a really important movement though, driven by technology, clean label. There are organizations out there, as you know, pushing clean label. Don't take it lightly, think about it. Leading companies in agriculture and food, all these companies and more are talking specifically about clean label. This is a real thing. These are mainline companies, as you know. What's orthorexia? Orthorexia is a psychological eating disorder that's arising. It's based on people becoming obsessive about clean labels. And where is that obsessiveness applied elsewhere? On Instagram. So believe it or not, psychologists are actually tying these things together with this emerging eating disorder tied to clean label. If you don't think that clean label is real, 
I hope this is evidence that yes, indeed, it is very real. So yeah, you can argue activists started Clean Label, but marketers have embraced it. And part of it is because we're more educated as consumers. So we're interested in what's in our food more than ever. 71% of consumers we know from research CO did want nutrition information on labels of foods that they're eating. The pressure for clean label will shift preferences. People want to know what the cow ate that made the milk, that made the yogurt that's in the breakfast parfait or in the yogurt in the cooler case in their grocery store. So that's something that you should be looking at. Number three, you can see that on the right. What is that? It's kombucha, basically fermented tea in essence. Fermented foods are huge, as you might know. Why has kombucha gotten big? Probably because it's, you know, in part because it's a new cool thing, in part because it promises specific benefits for gut health. So number three, technology leading us to functional foods, not food that's just general good for you, food that has a specific benefit related to sleep better, reduce stress, uh, improve digestion, very specific things related to food. So big that Forbes says it's going to be one of the biggest trends this year, and you can look at plenty of other research that bears that out. Our friends at Data Essentials, well-respected research firm that we work with sometimes, 90% of consumers, this is new research, just within the last few weeks, interested in functional foods. That's a lot of people. What do they want? Well, this list, I would classify this list from as kind of the obvious things. You know, organic is sort of the thing, right? It has been for a number of years. All natural, superfoods, whole grains, high protein. These are the kinds of things that people are saying they want. That is kind of obvious. Here's something that you can really use. 66% of people, they're moving to not just the idea that this food is good for me. They want you to be able to back it up with research. For years in agriculture and food, there's this debate, fact versus emotion. Well, what this is telling us is that you have to have the science, but yes, you still need to make when you communicate, when you market, the emotional connection to the consumers. But people want to know the fact. We're ever more educated as consumers. Why do you care? Research on this is continuing and intensifying. Products are figuring out what their functional benefit is. Think about the microbiome. I heard this podcast recently. Scientists who made the first presentation on microbiome having a big impact on human health to a scientific conference almost got laughed out of the room. Now we have prebiotics that work with probiotics that give us better gut health to make us healthier. From our client Arm & Hammer, we know that that's applying very much to animal agriculture as well, to ultimately to food we eat. Consumers want products that deliver specific health benefits. Have you looked at what those benefits might be for products that you grow, process, or make available. Number four, artificial intelligence and what you eat. By the way, I love that illustration from a 1950s article. Look at that illustration for a moment. You got gamma rays, genetic modification. You got a giant ear of corn. You got giant tomatoes in the background. This farmer is in a cab. This is like 50 years before any of this happened. There's an antenna communicating with who knows what. We know now GPS on top of that. And his boss is a woman. Wow, it's 50 years ago, the modern world. Whoever, whoever did that illustration, pretty smart person. This today is real. This guy, Jason Cohen, founds this company a couple years ago, Gastrograph. He has people start to put into a, cons uh, a computer algorithm their preferences for taste for food to predict for companies the kinds of foods people want. If you think that's foo-foo dust, hocus pocus, one of our clients, McCormick, we're not working on this specific thing, is using artificial intelligence to predict the flavors that people are going to want based on trends of where food is evolving. Big impact. 
And if that's not enough for you, how about this company from Israel, TasteWise? You have an app, you put in your preferences, it creates a profile for you. So pretty soon, when I go to the uh, automated barista that they have in the Austin airport, it's not functional, I'll see Saturday whether it is yet or not, I'm just gonna swipe my phone and it's gonna make the latte exactly to my preference. And where that's going next is to being able to have things in there that might benefit my personal health profile. So why should you care? Well, this is real. People's want what I, people want what I call fragmented specificity. They wanna know things specifically that are for them. We can do that now. And we also have the ability to target audiences to bring tailored messages to do them. It will be a good marriage for ag and food marketers. Number five, CBD, hemp, marijuana. I'm kind of putting these together. I'm not gonna talk about these for a long time other than to say it's a huge, huge industry. They're kind of tied together. Uh, CBD, hemp-based, non-hallucinogenic. I had to put this product photo up here. I thought recess. I mean, doesn't everybody want to go back to kindergarten? You know, I'd like to have recess this afternoon. I don't know if I can have it or not. So I'm not necessarily saying you should drink this product at work, but sounds like a pretty attractive idea. I thought it was really kind of brilliantly named. What's important though, and is not silly or funny, is this 22 billion dollar industry, also kind of kissing cousins with the medical marijuana industry. And the reason we want to know about this, eventually, even though CBD is controversial, there's this federal versus state thing with medical marijuana, that's going to get worked out. High value crop, there's a company I, I know of, they Village Farms, they pioneered growing tomatoes inside. They now have switched to a bunch of uh, they now have switched to growing medical marijuana. When that gets worked out, huge business affecting food and agriculture. And today we don't just have five and 15, we have six in 15. And one of those I'm gonna call a tech fail. You know what? I don't think people are gonna be eating crickets. You know, five, six, seven years ago, crickets were all the rage at the South by Southwest Interactive Festival. We're gonna all eat them. I was at a food startup thing two weeks ago. This guy is trying to sell mealworm flour. I'm going like, you know, I don't think I want mealworms in my chocolate chip cookies. I'm going to call that one a fail. We'll see what happens. But it's a good reminder with all these technologies that are going to evolve. We need to know about them. We need to ebb and flow with them. So with that, let's get to a couple of your questions. Now, one of them uh, goes right back to the cookbook thing here. Uh, is this cookbook thing a fad? Well, I don't think so. Back almost 30 years ago, when I wrote speeches for a CEO, this idea of high tech and high, high touch and high tech came out. And a theory that's proved out, I've kind of watched it all these years, people, as technology increases, they crave, even technology-oriented younger audiences, they crave the tangible. That's what cookbooks are, and uh, they like that, and will continue. We all want that. Uh, what can farmers and those directly involved in production agriculture do to prepare to meet, to adapt some of these trends? Number one, be aware of them. And Lauren, we're going to send you a, uh, Joanna Gaines' book. One, be aware of them and look at how you are able to think about your product. For example, controlled environment agriculture. Those companies are looking at how light used to grow, let's say, some sort of lettuce, changes the color, which changes the nutritional value, which can affect the taste. So there, if you think about functional foods, something specifically that people are interested in. So even if you're growing the product, you can look at it. I was talking with the turkey, turkey industry a few weeks ago and said, okay, what is it about turkey that maybe has a functional food benefit that hasn't been researched yet that consumers will want. So no matter where you are in this spectrum, you can be thinking about that. Uh, <clears throat> have you met Joanna Gaines? No, I haven't, <laughs> but I've been to Waco. And if you're interested in business and you just go there and look at that from that point of view, it's an amazing business empire. I would suggest that you uh, check it out. Functional foods, is this a real deal or is it a joke? Better sleep, really? Yeah, really. Think about it. 
for me, for instance, I couldn't drink three cups of coffee and go to sleep. Well, functional foods are kind of the opposite of that. I can tell you as a distance bicycle rider, what you eat has a big effect on how you feel and how fast you're able to go a couple hours in. And those are short-term things, longer-term things about health, joints, digestion. It's becoming more and more proven that it's a real thing. It's going to continue. And so if I were in that area, we're, we're in the business of helping people market these things. But if I were in that area, I would be looking at how I could fit in with that. Now, we're about to go over time. Where else has AI played a role? One more question. Uh, certainly precision agriculture is part of that, you know, tailoring the amount of fertilizer I might put on a crop or herbicide, pesticide. Uh, we work with a client that uh, uses this to track what a dairy cow is doing, what its temperature is, what it's eating, is it drinking enough? So to predict whether that cow is going to be productive, healthful, whatnot. So in a lot of different areas. We're out of time. I am going to send you the Q&A, though, as well as the presentation. If you want to ask me something, please send me a note, mark.g at charlestonorway.com. Meanwhile, thank you for joining us today. This has been 5 and 15 from Charleston Orwig. Look for another one of these in about six weeks, and I hope you have a great day and, and maybe even get to take recess this afternoon. Thanks, all. Bye.